day, good people. It's your boy, David Johns, and I'm back with another installment of Three Things. First up, in case you missed it, recently the Washington Post covered the love and life story of a Black same gender loving couple who have been together for over 50 years. Phil Pugh and Mike Petros reminisce on their life together from meeting at church <laughs> to living in a farmhouse to owning a restaurant together, to living together now in their retirement years where they volunteer in organizations like LGBTQ Detroit. Shout out to my brother leader, Curtis Lipscomb. Phil stated that he and Mike have dedicated their lives to ensuring that younger black people know that they can grow old and that they'll have something to live for. Now, this is especially important given the lack of public examples of Black queer love, especially amongst elders. You have to see the images. You just have to see the images. Now, the author of the article, Jamal Jordan, shout out to Jamal, said that Phil and Mike exist as examples of what's possible, of what longevity for Black queer men looks like. And I just am here to say that we need so much more of it. It warms my heart to read about the life and love of a couple like Phil and Mike. Uh, we simply do not have enough representation of aging and elder, Black, LGBTQIA+, and same gender loving people thriving in life and in love. And we need to see more stories focusing on just that, uh, especially going into LGBTQ plus History Month in October. I encourage all of you who have not yet read this perspective to do so. Uh, as a reminder that we have always been here. Second, recently students at MacArthur High School in Irving, Texas held a walkout protest after the removal of an LGBTQ safe space stickers, not a several stickers. Things are always popping off in the great state of Texas, my Paris hotel. Now what had happened was teachers who sponsored the Gay Straight Alliance found that stickers that they share with coworkers and others to signal safe space started disappearing. People were removing them, so we're clear. They didn't just up and walk away, as my mother used to say. Now, the removal of these safe space stickers was clearly an external reflection of deeper problems with a campus community that does not properly support all members of the community. Now, the school district has said that they support the idea of making campuses a safe space for all, but that teachers, quote, shall not use the classroom to transmit beliefs personal beliefs regarding political or sectarian issues, end quote. Ha, huh, this math ain't math ain't. Uh, what I know is that removing stickers that make it explicit that queer, trans, and non-binary students are welcome accomplishes the exact opposite of making schools a safe space for all. And we need to move past ideas into implementing practices to ensure that all means all. I clearly, without equivocation, support the students who walked out and applaud them for using their power to get into good trouble. Now, we should all be clear that this is yet another example of how schools, uh, public institution, uh, is pushing the heterosexual agenda. And y'all wait, I'm gonna say much more in this dissertation. I'm absolutely sick of straight people feeling so uncomfortable and threatened when trans, queer, and non-binary students receive the affirmation and safety afforded to their peers without contest. Third, speaking of schools, the Newburgh School Board in Oregon will likely vote on Tuesday on a policy that would ban the display of any image or symbol that supports or possesses a, quote, political, quasi-political, or controversial topic. This includes, you already know where I'm going with this, Black Lives Matter flags, pride flags, and other support for queer, trans, and non-binary people. And I mean queer in the ontological sense of the term in its usage here. The school district has faced two racist incidents in the last two weeks, one where students participated in a Snapchat group pretending to buy and sell Black students. And another where an employee showed up in blackface saying that she was portraying Rosa Parks. Not only are both of these events absolutely disgusting and not funny in any way, shape, or form, nowhere near ironic, they show how keeping discussions of BLM and other political topics out of schools can further to embolden racist, homophobic, xenophobic zealots. Now, Michelle Roland Schwartz, who's the executive director of Oregon Attorney General's Sexual Assault Task Force stated that identities such as race, ethnicity, gender, and sexual orientation are not political statements. They are simply a part of who your 
students are. That last part was for educators who elect to do this job. Now, that's perfectly put. Students should feel affirmed, not ashamed of important parts of themselves, and them feeling safe enough to show up as they are to take risks is required for them to learn. What vexes me most about all of these decisions and discussions harm students who are already vulnerable. And it also highlights how we should instead be focusing on listening to what they tell us they actually need. That's all for this week. If there is not enough to process there, I'll see you next time.